Welcome to our service for this morning, and Merry Christmas to all of you. I want to take just a moment to, sh to thank Sherry and Lee for providing all of our music through this season. Uh, sometimes when I sit and just listen to them, I, like many of you, just get lost in the music and just want to thank you both for all that you do for us. So our thought for today is you've had a Christmas, and it's been a different Christmas this year. It's been a, I guess we'd call it a COVID Christmas, but it's been Christmas nonetheless. And I wonder, what will we take away with us from Christmas this year? What is it we'll take away with us? Let us enter into God's presence. God arranged through human hands the fulfillment of all prophecy. And he called us to go and see this thing. And God came to dwell among us in that manger in Bethlehem. And we were called to go and to see this thing. And God made known his love to the lowest of the lowly first. And we were called to go and see this thing. So let us, like Mary, ponder all these things in our hearts. Amen. Infant holy, infant lowly. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we praise you from the heights and from the depths. We praise you in the heavens, on the seas. We praise you from the lowest to the highest of places in this world. For your splendor shines from a manger. And in that lowly spot, the light began to pierce the darkness of our whole world. and in a fragile form of flesh. You were revealed to us face to face 
the face that Mary gazed upon, the face that spoke God's love into our world. And so we gather with all people in every place who have glimpsed your salvation and your grace. Together we worship and we praise you as the Creator, the Son and the Spirit, the source of life, the glorious light, and the wisdom of the ages. You are the source of all hope. You invite us to live in the light and to experience the splendor of your glory. We confess that we are reluctant sometimes to embrace this new life and choose instead to remain in the darkness. We allow our fears and hurts to hold us hostage and our own illusions to hold us back from new and real possibilities. You offer us unconditional love. But somehow, we expect our own love to be earned. Forgive us and create us anew in the image of your Son, for it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Hear the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ is indeed the light and salvation. And in him we are made new. So let us give thanks to God. Let us be at peace with ourselves. Let us be at peace with one another. And may the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The hymn that we all know, Silent Night.
Let us pray. As we turn to your words, once again we pray that you will open our hearts and our minds to all that you offer. Send forth your Holy Spirit to illuminate these pages. For we pray this in your name. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the Psalm 148. Psalm chapter 148. Let us hear God's word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. And praise the Lord from the earth, ye sea monsters and all deeps fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of earth, all peoples, princes and rulers of the earth, Young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, beginning at verse 10 and reading through to chapter 62, verse 3. Isaiah 61, reading from verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, for my whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, And as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Amen. And then reading from the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, 
Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout. Looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms, and he praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came, and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. May the Lord bless to us these readings of his own word. So how has your Christmas been so far? I pray that it was everything you were looking for, everything you were hoping for. But was there something missing? Are you still looking for that one thing you were hoping to find? As kids, there was always one more thing we had hoped for or dreamed of. As adults, Maybe we're looking for a bit more of peace. Maybe we would like to find a bit more of that which the angel spoke of, that goodwill to all people. And maybe as we ponder Christmas, we would hope that more people would find the real meaning of Christmas. Or perhaps, perhaps there's just a prayer left unanswered. I'd ask you not to despair, because sometimes we need a little patience as we wait. But I am sure that what we find at the end of that wait will be what God desires for us to have and to find. Today I want to look at this passage from Luke. In light of all that we are looking for. First, 
Mary and Joseph doing what was required of the law, the rite of purification for both Mary and her son to be dedicated to God. They came to offer two turtle doves or two pigeons. Being poor, that is what they could afford to offer as opposed to a lamb which wealthier people may have offered for the purification law. But of those two doves, one of them would be a burnt offering, a thanksgiving, a praise to God. The other, a sin offering, recognizing their place in the presence of God and looking for cleansing. But it's interesting, don't you think, that the burnt offering, yes, but the sin offering, that a sacrifice was required for the one who would become the ultimate sacrifice of the world. Jesus, the Son of God, becoming Son of Man. He had not yet fulfilled the law, and so he was still bound to it. He was subject to it, and it was required of him. Now, after 40 days, and at the time of the purification, the firstborn was presented to the Lord in the sanctuary as holy to the Lord. To get an idea of what this is all about, think of the story of Hannah and Samuel of the Old Testament. How Hannah brought her son not just to be presented to the Lord, but to give him to the Lord. Now, in this story from Luke, in the temple at that time, were two of my favorite Bible characters, Simeon, son of Hillel, who was the great Jewish scholar. Hillel was part of the Sanhedrin, but he was cast out because of his teachings they ran contrary to that of the Sanhedrin. You see, they believed in a temporal kingdom for the Messiah. But Simeon believed that the Messiah was of the spiritual kingdom. The Messiah he was looking for would be one who would serve God and serve mankind. Now, we often think of Simeon as being old. He may not necessarily have been very old. He was just willing to rejoice in the promise of God. And that was that he would not depart this world until he had seen the Messiah and the realm that the Messiah would usher in. So after seeing that, his life was fulfilled, it was complete, and he was re willing to return to the Father. He had prophetic abilities as well. He was able to tell Mary what lay ahead. He had found what he had waited for. He was content to rest in God and willing to share with Mary what he knew of her son. Sometime I hope to meet Simeon. 
Anna is the other one. She was old. At least they tell us she was old. She was an ancient prophetess, daughter of Phanuel, which puts us in the minds of Jacob, where Jacob said, For I have seen God face to face, in that my life is preserved. Perhaps now this mystery is revealed in the Son of God. Anyways, Anna had lived a long time in the temple. And at that moment, when she entered into the temple, she recognized Jesus. And she began to tell everyone about him. She spoke to everyone who was looking for redemption. And she pointed them to the redemption given by God. Two simple passages following the Christmas story. But what do we make of these passages today? So many years after the birth of Jesus, and even today in our Christian calendar after Christmas and heading into a new year, what do we make of these passages? In Advent, we looked at hope and peace and joy and love. We searched the prophecies. We listened to John the Baptist. We talked of baptisms, of water and the Holy Spirit, of a child who would come We listened for the voice of angels, the story of the shepherds. But what were we searching for? What were we looking for? Where are we looking for the Son of God? Where are we looking for a child in a manger? Perhaps. We look for that child every year. Same manger, same place. So where are we looking for that child again this year? Or were we looking for something else? Where are we looking for peace and hope and joy and love? Where are we looking for redemption? and grace and mercy and salvation. Perhaps. Were we searching for God's peace within us? Or God's peace with us? Perhaps. And I wonder if we're not sure what we're looking for. Will we know when we found it? Will we know what we have found? 
I guess one way to look at it is, what is the longing of our heart? Do we long for a relationship with God that is absolute and true? That is more than what it has been? Are we looking for a relationship with Jesus Christ? that helps us to truly, truly enter in to God's peace? Are we looking for true forgiveness? Are we looking for a way to forgive ourselves? Are we looking for a way to share Jesus Christ in this world? Are we looking for a way to express the joy of Christ so that others can truly see it? Are we looking to dedicate our lives to Jesus Christ in such a way that we truly become his people and we long to live and to find and to see Jesus Christ? So that when we see him, when we, when we finally grasp all that Christ is and can be for us, we can rejoice in God and say, thank you. Or we can point others to the redemption of all people. So these two, Simeon and Anna, I don't know what they were looking for all those years. But we do know they found it. They found it. And did you see what they did when they found it? They rejoiced in God. When you find all that you are looking for as you go to see this thing that has happened, when you find it, rejoice in God and then tell everyone share with everyone what you have found so that they too can see the redemption of all people be like Simeon be like Anna or be like the shepherds ones that you sing about in the hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Lord, you have given us the gift of your Son. The gift of yourself. And we rejoice in all that you offer. And we would now give ourselves to you. In gratitude for the events of Christmas, of Jesus' life, of his ministry, of his grace and redemption. And we say thank you. And we ask, Lord, that for all of those things that we were searching for and maybe did not find, help us to remember what we did find and help us to rejoice in it. And hear, Lord, the prayer that we would offer to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Go now from this place in the joy and the hope that you find in the Christ child. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen.